today we want to not only worship the Lord as we all do, but we also want to honor our graduates. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's, let's celebrate them again. Amen. Probably none of you uh, had the graduation that you deserve, but uh, as a church, we wanted to make sure that we said to you that we were proud of you. Amen. We're happy for you. And we're looking forward to brighter days in your life to come. Amen. 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 Let Jesus lead you. Jesus the Christ we pray. 
And every believer said, Amen. 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 And hallelujah. hallelujah. Let us praise God now as our praise team comes. God's anointed new generation. Come on, let's praise God.
Even in these times, perhaps especially in these times, we got to do more than just be sitting on the premises. We need to be standing on the promises. Amen. If you know that's true, just give God praise. On today, we are honoring our graduates, and we are so proud of them. Uh, want to ask them to stand. Amen. 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 We're yeah. delighted to see them here, and, and uh, we're missing one or two, but we are delighted to see those that are here, and we want to just give a message to all of us, but zeroed in for you on today. So as we bow our heads together, y'all may be seated as we bow our heads together. Oh God, our Father, we delight in your presence. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. And in advance, we give you thanks, glory, and praise for you are great and greatly to be praised. In the matchless and marvelous name of he that was, is, and shall forever be, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Won't you open your Bibles again to Isaiah chapter 6. Get my mind right. Yes, Lord. Amen. Get my spirit right. Amen. 
We're about to hear your word, Lord. I know that you can talk and I miss it if I ain't right. Amen. So I got to let you get me right so that I can recognize your voice when I, when I hear it. Yes. And no one, somebody just say no one. No one. No one goes into the presence of the Lord and leaves the same way they came. Amen. Hallelujah. So whenever you pray, whenever you come to the house of God, if you leave the same way you came, no, you didn't come right. Because if you came right, you leave right. Or oh, y'all to help me there. But, but if you go in wrong, you'll leave wrong. Sometimes God's presence, just his presence, without him saying a word, his presence can transform your whole day. Amen. That all you did was get on your knees, but in the presence of the Lord, he made you feel rich and you still ain't got to die. He gave you joy and circumstances didn't change, but your disposition changed. And so that's what our gathering is about, not just for shape, form, or fashion. And as our foreparents would say, an outside show to an unfriendly world. No, we gather corporately so that we can be in the Lord's presence. Amen. Yeah. We don't come in just any kind of way. That's right. In his house. Yeah. And in his presence. Yeah. We enter knowing he's holy. Amen. Yeah. Holy. Amen. Holy. Why did he say holy three times? Amen. Holy because God makes us holy. Yeah. He imputes us to be holy. He imputes holiness to us. He charges that to our account. But God is three times times holy, which means he's the height, the zenith. He is the perfection of holiness. Right. Nobody had to charge it to his account. It is just his intrinsic nature to be holy. All right now. So when I in his presence, yeah. I, I see him and I say, oh, yeah. I want to be like him. Yes. And if it makes me holy, I like him, but 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 he is the model, he is the the, the idea, he is the paradigm. Yeah. And so I implore you today that when we sing that, when we go into the preaching moment, the prayer moment, just remember that God is holy, holy, holy. Yeah. And notice that in this text, we're going to read it in a few moments, and I'm dealing with it now because it's not going to come up in the sermon, but I want you to have the context. That when the seraphims said holy, 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 mm -hmm. they didn't say it like we said. That's right. That's right. They cried. Yes. Holy. Yes. Holy. Yeah. Holy. Holy. Hallelujah. We, we, we pass it with it. We are different with it. We, yeah. we say it and look at other folk and speak. Yeah. But no, that, that undivided attention was on God's holiness. And so we're going to sing that verse again. Holy, holy, holy.
Confederate statues coming down. Funerals with strict limitations on how many can attend. And the sad thing about it is it is a precursor of what our new norm will look like. After 9-11, going to the airport has changed permanently. Uh, we used to, so some of you will remember, you used to be able to park and walk around the airport and wait for the person whose flight was to arrive. Not any longer. 9-11 has changed that. And so this year will change for us how we interact socially permanently. Amen. With that in mind, the class of 2020 is the first senior class that I know of that couldn't finish their school year in class or celebrate graduation or prom with something that's considered typical. Amen. What a year. Amen. I hope and pray that this infamous year is the only one we will know in our lifetime. Amen. I can't guarantee it, but I shall hope and pray Amen. that we never see a year like this year again. When someone asks you, when did you graduate? You'll be able to say, I graduated in the year of the world's worst pandemic. In the year of a national quarantine. In the year of the national weeks, uh, the nation's weeks of protesting and burning buildings. Wendy's was set on fire in Atlanta last night because Another black man was killed on the property of Wendy's. And I will not give commentary to that at this scene, but just wanted to throw that out to say that things are, heating, are heated and doesn't appear to be cooling down. And so this is what verse 1 of our text is really all about. The death of King Uzziah was a national landmark for the nation of Israel. Everyone in the nation was sensitive to the death of Uzziah. Uzziah was a great king. I said he was a great king. He was followed by less than great kings, but he was a great king. He started ruling at the age of 16. He became king of Judah then and reigned for 52 years. He was a great king. His name, Uzziah, means Yah is my strength. He was a strong king. He was faithful to God and one of the most prosperous kings since the time of Solomon. He was a great king. But even though he was a great king, he who has virtues also has vices. Yeah. Oh, and we forget that sometimes. Sometimes we hold those who have virtues to a higher standard and we quickly disqualify them when they don't meet the standards we give them that we don't even meet ourselves. Yeah. Oh, y'all to help me today. He was a great king with many virtues, but he also had vices. His successes led to his pride. And y'all, when you succeed, it's difficult to keep your pride in check. Pride is a spiritual disease that makes everybody sick but the patient. And then in time, it will destroy him or her. All of us who have pride issues ought to swallow our pride because it is said pride comes before the fall. So out of pride, Uzziah went into the Holy of Holies, which was a place specified for the high priest only. 
But he's a great king. And so he chose to go. And as a result, he was stricken with leprosy and died. It was a terrible death. And because it was a terrible death, it was a terrible year. The nation was in mourning. The nation was in grief. It was a terrible year because the king, the great king, had suddenly died. But in that year, in that terrible year, in that year reeking with the stench of sorrow, Isaiah said, yeah. I saw the Lord. Yeah. The year is a landmark. It's an unusual year making an unusual epiphany. Isaiah would say, and you and I can say, we will never forget this year, but I want to tell you, graduates and all who hear my voice, it's not what happens to us, it's what becomes of us because of what happens to us. Oh Lord, today. It, 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 you can either let what happens to you make you bitter, or you can let it make you better. You can let it develop you or let it devour you. You can let it make you a winner or make you a whiner. Uh, I want to tell you, if you're going through something, if you're facing something, if today is difficult, I, I want to give you some, some, some secretive information. Don't tell nobody I told you. But I just want you to know, just, just keep it to yourself, that you ain't the only one. I know it looks bad, I know it looks dismal, but trust me, there's some folk close to you that's going through some stuff you don't know about. And if you become a whiner, then it's not what happened to you that destroyed you, it's how you handle what happened to you. Even dismal memories can be enveloped into a divine moment. God can work even in the dark. Amen. Have you, like Isaiah, in this year, seen the Lord? I pray that you have. If you haven't, I pray that you will. It's a vision despite the national reality. So much going on in the nation that's dismal, but I saw also the Lord. I saw CNN, but I saw also the Lord. I saw social media, but I saw also the Lord. I saw the riots. I saw the protests. I saw the data on this virus, but I saw also the Lord. I want to suggest to you that if this dismal year only shows you itself and you don't see the Lord, this year it will be worse for you than it ought to be. The physical reality is blighted, but the spiritual reality can be bright. That's the prayer and the hope that I have for each of you that's in the body of Christ, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you would know what is the hope of his calling and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. I, that's Ephesians chapter 1 verses 18 and 19. I want to say to you that in the worst year of our nation, it can be the best year in your relationship with the Lord. The year is a landmark, but the year displays the nation's hardship. It's a nation's hardship, but y'all, I'm about to say something that I hope you will remember. That we can have a narrow view through a broad window. The window is broad. Worldwide pandemic. National protest. That's a wide window. But your view can be Brought now. Yes, sir. I've got a flashlight that, that, that if you turn it one way, the light can be broad. 
But if you turn it the other way, the light can be narrow. And the, the, the light is sharper yes, the more narrow it becomes. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, the nation is looking through a broad window. But I want to say to those of you who are in the body of Christ, even through this broad window, narrow your vision. Don't just see what the nation is showing. See something more specific. Worldwide pandemic, national protest, but I saw yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Hey, yeah. high and lifted up. Don't let what the nation says or shows you dictate your view. The nation has provided sadness for us. We, we, we had to deal with the death of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and the others who were on the plane, and it rattled us. That's how the year got started for us. And when we were grieving over that, then we heard about a pandemic, and the nation moved us from sadness to fear. And while we were dealing with fear and, and, and afraid to go outside, afraid to shake hands, then we started seeing how continuously police were killing unarmed black people. And so we started moving from sadness to fear to anger. That's what the world has shown us this whole year. Right. Ahmaud Arbery, Arbery's death and lynching the Breonna Taylor's killing in our own house. George Floyd's having a police knee on his neck. And we move from sadness to fear to anger. But those of us who know how to think are at a great advantage over those who know what to think. Oh, I said something. Yeah, and, and you, you got to learn how to think that 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 when they give you a narrative, yes. you got to be able to take that narrative and translate it into what God is saying. Amen. Amen. That's, that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. They, every man heard in their own language. That's how our forebears made it through chattel slavery and Jim Crowism. They heard something that the oppressor wouldn't tell them. They listened to the oppressor, but it was by the time it reached their ears, it was translated into something else. And that's what we've got to do as the people of God. Glance at the news, but focus on the master. Glance at the nation, but sharpen our view so that we can see a narrow view through a wide window. Oh, yes. The nation has its hardship in this year that is a landmark. But I want to say to you that even when the nation is topsy-turvy, you ought to seek a personal transformation. I promise you, that's why I, I am. That's why I've been the whole time. That I, 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 I want to be aware. I want to be knowledgeable of what's going on. But Lord, don't let me forget during this crisis that you are still God. Amen. If you were God in 2019, nobody dethroned you in 2020. If you had all power last year, you still got all power this year. If you are good when I hear good news, you are good when I hear bad news. And if I don't see it, it's not because he's changed, it's because I've changed. The Lord said, Isaiah, I know the nation is bleak and dismal, but I got a question for you, Isaiah. I ain't talking to the nation now. I'm talking to you. That's what God would say to you graduates. That's what God would say to every one of us who hear this message. I ain't talking to Trump. I, I, I'm not trying to get a press conference to speak to the nation. I'm talking to you. Whom shall I see? And who will go for us? Many of us are still waiting on somebody to step up. And God is asking you, you tell me who's going to step up. We waited on a reincarnation of Martin Luther King. And, and I tell you, if Martin Luther King was here today, folk wouldn't follow him. There are two ways I know they wouldn't follow him. The first way is a whole bunch of them who claimed to have followed him when he was here did. Amen. 
I wish I had some witnesses here. And the second reason I know people wouldn't follow him is because his name is being criticized by the black community because now the black community is angry and he was constantly talking about the love ethic and, and the black community is saying, that ain't working. So some are waiting on a Martin Luther King that you wouldn't embrace if he were here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So God is saying, no, I ain't sending you no Martin King. Amen. I'm asking you. Amen. What's that song? Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, oh Lord. Amen. Standing in the need of prayer. To stop waiting on somebody to step up and do what God may be calling upon you to do. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah volunteered. He said, here I am. Y'all, Isaiah ain't here. So whom shall I send? George Floyd is gone. So whom shall I send? Amara Aubrey is gone. Whom shall I send? Breonna Taylor is dead. Whom shall I send? Sandra Mann is gone. Whom shall I send? Mike Brown is gone. Whom shall I send? Trenton Martin ain't alive. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And yet, Isaiah said, here am I. Isaiah responds voluntarily, here am I. But not only does he respond voluntarily, he responded volitionally. Yeah. In other words, he's not only saying, here am I, but then he says, send me. Yeah. See, some folk are saying, here am I, but they ain't adding send me. Yeah. Come on, help me if you can. Yeah. You, 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 you are acknowledging your, your, your presence, but you're not acknowledging your willing participant. God is saying, I need somebody I can go send. Will you be a vocational volunteer? Everybody can't be a king or a president. Everybody can't be a community leader or a protester. But everybody can do something. Do I have a witness here? Everybody can do something. If it's just being a person that models your faith, that's something. If it's a person who manages your 